Hi, I'm Will Kaplan from the Cumberland River Compact. And I'm Ross Miller. We're here in Springfield, Tennessee for a rain garden build today. Will, do you want to take us down to the site where we're going to plant this garden? Yeah, sure, sure. So our, uh, our first, um, the first thing we do when we're building a rain garden is site selection. So we like to talk with the landowner, kind of see if they're having any stormwater issues or if they uh, have uh, really noticed where flow is going to be coming. So um, where I am, uh, you can, there, there's a lot of flow coming down here. This area up here would be a little bit too steep for us. Um, the grade would be a little bit too much. So we want to come down here to where it's a little bit flatter. I mean, we're, we'll dig and prepare uh, this area. So we are in fact gonna go with this site, but I'm gonna tell you a little bit about why we went with this site. So there is a considerable amount of flow coming down. We know stormwater is, uh, is passing through this area, so we know we can capture stormwater here. Um, if something's not super obvious in your yard where you can tell where the flow is coming, um, you can often connect to downspouts. Now, the downspout behind me is, looks like it's attached to a French drain, so that wouldn't work. Um, the downspout beside me, it looks like it's directing kind of to the, um, uh, well, it's close to the foundation and it's kind of directing near the driveway there, so we'd want to stay away from that. So um, this is the site we're going to go with. So now we'll talk a little bit about, um, about kind of pre-mapping the area before you, do, before you go into digging. And we'll, uh, forgive me if I'm wrong, but you always want to make sure you're at least 10 feet away from the foundation of your right. home or your neighbor's home when you build a rain garden. So that's why we were saying we're staying away Correct. from the storm drain itself. So what we're going to go with, we're going to go with the classic bean shape. Between Will and I right here, we found that with the amount of slope, this would be the perfect spot with the berm to the back of the, of the, uh, of the build right here. It's, it's gonna, the water's going to hit and sink at this exact spot. It's far enough away from the foundation. It's far enough away from the heavy flood damage. This seems to be the perfect spot. All right, we even went ahead and took some spray paint and marked out what our little garden's going to look like in this bean shape. We made sure we're away not only from the foundation, but we made sure there would be no roots in the area, which could cause some issues. We, of course, called 811 before we dig. Uh, and uh, next thing to do is actually just put some shovels in the ground and get out this dirt. You'll want to dig down about 18 to 24 inches, keeping the bottom of the garden flat and level so that water infiltrates evenly. Use some of the soil you're digging out to build the berm on the back of the garden. Make sure not to compact the soil that you're putting back into the garden. If your soil is rocky or doesn't drain water within 24 hours, you may need to amend it with compost or sand. Um, so now we've dug out uh, the rain garden, we prepared the bed, we tried to grade it kind of as level as we could. Um, obviously we're on a slope so we have to dig out a little bit more uh, up front to kind of uh, level that off. We used a lot of the excess dirt to build this berm to help hold the water in. Um, and then we know these things, they're going to overflow. It's just kind of uh, nature of the beast. Uh, you can't really make them large enough to capture all the storm water. So we dig out a little trench-like depression um, and then pack it with stone. Uh, and so now I know that when it overflows, it's going to overflow this way, uh, much like the storm water was actually behaving on this site from the beginning. And all that's left is to plant these plants. We got some hydrangeas, some switchgrass, some irises, some carex, some uh, river oats, some black-eyed Susans. Uh, these go in any order the homeowner would want. So we have a lot of different uh, native plants out here. Um, some different light requirement needs for them. So this oak leaf hydrangea can tolerate a little bit more shade. So we kind of have it up front, um, kind of under this tree. Also the carex grass and the uh, um, the river oats, they can tolerate a little bit of shade too. So we kind of work those along the front. Uh, we've got things like aster and some of the grasses more in the back that are going to really need a lot more sunlight. Um, so yeah, you can kind of get creative. I like to cluster things. You could space things out, but you know, I like to kind of keep clusters of, of plants together. That way they can kind of, uh, kind of grow in concert and, and kind of create, you know, some, some cool boundaries and contrasts. Mulch and water your newly planted rain garden. The more the plants fill in, the better it will be at holding water. To learn more about the Cumberland River Compact's Rain Garden Program, visit our website at www.cumberlandrivercompact.org.